What's going on everybody? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. In this video, I'm excited to bring you a content strategy and a marketing plan for your Vimeo OTT platform. All right, whatever your series is that you decide to host through Vimeo OTT, I think I got a little something for you. So stick around for it right after the intro. And we are back. Let's jump right into this. So if you are using Vimeo OTT, you're, that means that you're interested in, in having your own outside of platforms such as YouTube, which is, of course, where this video that you're watching is hosted on. But you now want to have your own community. You now want to have your own fan base. You want to convert that audience into a very strong fan base. And I think I have some strategies built right here for you. Now, I want to preface this quickly by telling you that I do not have my own Vimeo OTT account. I am not a Vimeo OTT streamer. However, I have helped one single client actually build their Vimeo OTT platform because they actually wanted to use this for their their actually entertainment brand. And they wanted to actually stream their content through this and have some success to where they are building their own client community and everything else. And their client base and all that, which I won't be able to show you because that's private to them, but I'm going to show you the things that I have developed marketing and content strategy for them in order for them to have that success when I was working with them on this. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm actually show you is the Gary V content strategy, if you have not ever seen this yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, let me go to the beginning of this. And maybe you have heard of this already, I'm pretty sure. I don't well, I don't want to assume that you've heard of Gary V before, but let me assume that you have heard of Gary V before, Gary Vaynerchuk. All right. So he is known for just producing a massive amount of content. He's always on people's minds because he's always just publishing. And granted, keep this in mind, he has a team that works for him. So if you're a one person show doing everything on your end, there are two ways that you're going to be efficient at this. And I'm speaking from a me being a, a, a web designer trying to create YouTube content to help people with what I know and what I'm learning along the way here on YouTube. And I'm a one man show right now at this moment. But you either have to have a team working with you or you have to have systems in place that's going to make you more efficient and increase your speed rate to produce content at scale. Those are the only two ways that I personally can actually see you staying in a mind state of everybody else. And, and even with this content strategy being in a place, excuse my language, your content better be damn good to keep the attention and keep people's interest as much as possible because with all the options that exist out there, yours is just going to be buried in the dirt if you're not, if your content just isn't good, whether you're an animator, a, a film producer, a, a writer, screenwriter, whatever the case may be, you want to produce visual content that's going to excite people, capture them emotionally, then you, your stuff needs to be captivating to say the least that's what you should be aiming for whether you're non-fiction or fiction you should be aiming to capture somebody's attention that way but let's get into this so the gary v content model is basically this is subtitled how i make 30 pieces of content from a single keynote so i want you to replace the word single keynote with an episode with uh yeah let's just stick with episode right now because even if you're doing a documentary or even you're doing a, a drama okay you're doing some fictional drama you, you're probably pulling from an episode that you can actually take and pull several different pieces, several video clips that will entice your audience um, to a point to where they're wanting to watch this from beginning to end. It's, I mean, this isn't a, a new strategy. DJ Vlad does it all the time and, and sub content, sub clipping and, and Joe Button does it. This is not a new model, but um, do you want to be able to take micro pieces with those clips they usually take about have an hour-long video and take and create 10 minute clips from it or whatnot you're going to probably to create one or two minute clips for maybe your episodes to really capture the attention of people and you're not creating you can call it mini trailers i don't like to think that because when you think about a trailer it's it's just showing you all these highlights in succession um but it's it's not really giving you um really good glimpses of what the story is going to be about so let's go into this so it's defined as my model is structured like a reverse pyramid. I use one piece of pillar content, a documentation or a vlog of my day, a Q&A show, an interview or a keynote that I give, etc. Remember, you're using a, you're using an episode. So keep that in mind. 
and allow my team to analyze and repurpose it into 30 other pieces of content that are designed to over-index on the platforms that are distributed to. If you have a team, a little small team working for you, you can do the same exact thing. If you don't, you're a one-person show, I would suggest aiming for at least five small clips that you can distribute across all the social media platforms. Let's look at slide number three. So this series, he's breaking it down. Document pillar content. So we already went over that to that. Repurpose into micro content. So that would be create short form pieces of content, articles, memes, images, quotes, stories, mashups, remixes, rants, gifts, etc. And gifts are extremely powerful. If you can create, if you got a drama and there's some domestic violence going on, I well, let's not let's not push domestic violence. But <clears throat> the reason I even use it and bring up domestic violence is because if you're having a romance drama, there's some, you know, some things going on or whatever the case may be that's going to really emotionally hit because sometimes the best emotion is negative emotion because people on social media can be very negative and that's going to emotionally captivate them the most um so emotionally captivating is going to be an essential theme that you're going to see as i'm continuing to speak on this so then from there once you actually have your content you want to then distribute across all social media platforms from medium which by this is an old medium logo by now it's changed into something very weird but anyway uh, we can see all the social media platforms that are here now with medium actually it's going to be interesting because you if you're even if you're doing a drama if you can effectively adapt your video clips into a small written story and where it's narrative you have the quotes you have like quotation then she said whatever you can find a writer that could do that for you you'll be in the mix as well all right so let's quickly go through this document create distribute and listen so you can see the examples here i'm gonna leave a link for this content model too um, on this exact page in the comments section pinned at the very top of the comments and in the description as well so you have access to this i'm gonna quickly go through this so uh we already went over what micro content is he's going through this so you can see where he's scrubbing the list at on this right here all right and then here you can also see that, and, and you can use something like InShot that's available on Apple and Android, I believe, and you can create some very powerful text at the very top of your videos um, that will go ahead and give people what they actually are looking for and where you can really capture the audience's attention in a very effective way. So you want to go for converting your audience into a fan base. That's, that's what my suggestive goal would be, is to convert that audience, that very cold audience, into a fan base. And these are some very good ways of doing so. And then from there, actually, once you distribute it all across the platforms, <clears throat> then you can go ahead. Let's get to the listening part. You want to then listen to what people are actually saying about that content. If they're timestamping, if they're definitely timestamping, then that means it definitely hit them in a way that um, you wasn't expecting. So you want to go ahead and kind of, you know, see how what people are saying about your stuff and respond to it as much as possible. If you're a small creator, that means that you have even more time to respond to certain things as much as possible in a way that your fan base wouldn't even be expecting. So I just wanted to kind of showcase this in case you haven't seen it. You can get some really good strategies from this model right here. So I'll leave a link in the description for that. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. And let me go to the marketing and content strategy plan that I created for Delirium. Uh, entertainment for my client. Here you can see that I have a marketing plan laid out. We talked about doing paid advertisements through Facebook. And one of the things that I actually suggested was ignoring the boost, pros, boost post because that can serve as a quick fix. You want to actually go into the business page of Facebook. You want to really kind of target, set up, configure your, your back end of that so it could target specifically uh, who you need to the data that you actually need, the stats, all that stuff can be done in the back end of Facebook business page, which I'm going to have to do a whole separate post about that if y'all are interested. Defining who the target audience is. So this is critical. This is key. If you try to reach everybody, you're going to reach nobody. Even if it's entertainment, you need to figure out who are you trying to make laugh, who are you trying to make cry, what or what age group are they going to be in, what, what cultural group. Um, is this because for Delirium Entertainment, they create... Um, the, the owner creates or aims to create very diverse content for a diverse group of people. So the theme throughout 
all of their content is diversity. All right. And we're in a place right now where diversity is everything. So the time of her couldn't be better. But that's the that's the audience that she's trying to reach. She's trying to reach a diverse group of people. Is it just African-Americans? Uh, we got here interracial couples and people interested in interracial dating um, in this age group because for an older demographic who understands things the, the nuances of relationships who've been through some heartache instead etc married entrepreneurs um, and this is why based on one of her series which is called onyx she had a character a husband and wife named jackson and i can't remember his wife's name but they were an interracial couple they were both entrepreneurs so uh, because that sort of storyline exists, maybe they can also aim that at, at people who are married entrepreneurs, even if they are, you know, interracial couples, um, same race couples, etc. So, okay, so people who own family businesses or inherit them. So you want to think about if you're doing a romance drama, it's just for example, I'm just using romance drama as an example. If you're using creating that, then you want to think about what type of stories do you have in that and how you can actually take that story and market it to a select group of people that you think will find is very important to them. These stories will resonate with them the most. You need to think about all this. Uh, identifying the goal to determine the kind of ad campaign to run. Some questions that was asked was, how are we, are we aiming for more subscribers to the show? How much entertainment value would the fans be receiving from Delirium Entertainment? Are we aiming for more clicks? What kind of relationships are we built with the market to get them interested in the drama Onyx? And how do we generate long time fans? These are our questions that because this is, a, as you can see, it's highlighted in yellow. So these, this is a conversation that I had with the owner so we can kind of figure out and, and start thinking about how are we trying to reach these people to make Onyx, the series Onyx more successful, which in turn is going to make Delirium Entertainment more successful. So these are just conversations that and questions that you need to have. You have to have a plan set out. Um, the type of content needed to draw fans in. Are we using copywriters for ad campaigns? You need to have somebody that knows what to write psychologically to, to really capture their emotions, to really set off the emotions of your fan base, the audience that you're trying to create into a fan base. You want to create a rabbit fan base. So copywriters are really good for that. So if you can't find a copywriter, then maybe if you're, like I said, a one-person show, you need to find, you need to kind of research and learn some copywriting skills yourself so you can create some effective uh, ad campaigns. Let's go ahead and go down to content strategy because even if you're doing a romance drama, there's so many ways that you can adapt it to reach all types of people to really uh, get them engaged in the overall story. So maybe you can do some YouTube shorts. Um, like I said, I talked about the micro content. Uh, maybe you can actually adapt one of your episodes into a short animation to really draw them in. If you think about the Joe Budden podcast and how they have those little animated shorts based off of a few of their podcast episodes <clears throat> just something additional to really like shake shake things up and add some diversity to your content uh having a schedule release about uh hitting sweet spots of seven to twelve minute content so you want to have you want to utilize things like your youtube channel in order to get people out and let's say in any case that you are using these platforms and because of the climate that we're in a politically correct correct comment that we're in, maybe they kick you off you still need to have a plan to and this is where you're probably gonna have to rely on paid advertisement if that ever happens so you have to have a plan in terms of how you're going to capture these people in there you really have to get them engaged okay um now other things that you can do to really draw people in and get them interested cast interviews um entertainment shorts editorial and opinion pieces so these are the three ways the three mediums that your content is going to be broken down to video visual audio written all right and how can you transcribe and, and transition that episode that video episode into other forms where it's going to really get people's attention okay and then an audience convert to a community start building a community around your content start building a community around your episodes where you're talking to them you're reaching out and you're doing all these things that's really you're getting some buyback buy-in from your audience base and they're loving everything that you're doing all right so this is going to be pretty much it um, if you feel like this particular page could be of help to you I can make a very general version of this and I could just link it down into the description I need to have enough responses back on this where I can do so also and heck I may just do it anyway even without responses because right now I just want to help people who are trying to get into Vimeo OTT but if you want to see more 
content relating to Vimeo OTT regarding how to be successful at this, how to have a plan, develop a strategy. This is something I could possibly help you out with. Um, just leave me enough feedback in the comment section below. I will have a link eventually for you to sign up to my email list so you can continue to get some private uh, Vimeo OTT help as well as a product that's going to be released soon that's going to be comprehensive in terms of how Vimeo OTT works and we can actually go ahead and put this together because there's so much that I just can't put in the video and I'm almost losing my voice trying to talk as fast as I can covering all this information. So if you're interested in getting a comprehensive maybe like book, a uh, mini course, whatever the case may be, make sure you click on that link um, to my email list. So the minute that it's released, you'll be the first one to have it. That's going to be it for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Love you guys so much. DLJ Works. See y'all in the next video. God bless y'all.